Hello, welcome to another really centralized interview. This time it's with Luis Molina from Fermat, which is a platform for various distributed applications. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you doing? I'm happy to be here. It's good to talk to you. So uh, tell me about Fermat, what is it? Well, Fermat is, a, Fermat is an open source project and it's very tied to another project that we call the Internet of People. Okay, uh, let me introduce what is the Internet of People in order for you to later understand what is Fermat, okay? Okay, the Internet of People is a public infrastructure, a peer-to-peer -peer network, in this case of people, okay? Uh, you know the, you know Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain that at runtime uh, you have a, a, a public network where you can put value here and take it out across the across the globe almost for free okay but the 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 main the main property of the bitcoin blockchain once it's running is that it's a public infrastructure that is open anybody can participate anybody can run a node anybody can uh, use the network anybody can write software for using this network okay so the internet of people concept is similar to this Bitcoin blockchain in the sense that creates at runtime a network that is also a public infrastructure. So anybody can run a node of the Internet of People, anybody can create software to use this network, and anybody can use the network, okay? In fact, it's an open standard that uh, applications written to use this network, uh, they interoperate between each other. So what is the network about? When you use, when you use the Internet, uh, in by mobile applications or, or web, you are creating profiles for different private networks, okay? You create a profile for Facebook, a profile for Twitter, a profile for eBay, a, a profile as a passenger of Uber, and so on. A, every time you do this, you are part of a private network, and you are subject to the rules of this, of this, of this private network. For example, if you want to sell this mouse, uh, through Facebook, you have to pay Facebook in order to advertise, even if you are building Facebook's private network. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, so uh, the main concept of this Internet of People is that uh, why don't we detach identity from the network and we let people create their profiles for social or for business use cases and expose these profiles to a peer-to-peer -peer network. So this peer-to-peer -peer network is just about uh, people's profiles so that anybody can find anybody else, anybody can connect with anybody else, and anybody can do, uh, can socialize or do business with anybody else without relying in private networks. So in the same way that Bitcoins allows you to move value and in this public infrastructure network, and by, that, by doing so, bypassing private networks of tanks or moving value, the Internet of People allow you to find anybody else, uh, anybody else globally, uh, uh, in any use case, not only financial, but in any use case, because any different type of applications can use this public infrastructure and this network of people that is a shared asset, okay? So once this is deployed, applications will be able to allow you to, to interconnect with anybody uh, bypassing private networks. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. Okay, so if I'm a user, can you tell me how that would work in terms of how I make my identity and how I would, what that would look like? Um, let, let me put you an example so that, that it, 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 maybe people mm. can visualize it and, and not so abstract, okay? Let's say we have Uber, okay? When you have Uber uh, in your mobile phone and you request a taxi driver, this request goes to Uber company that queries this database of taxis that are around you, and it sends you one of their taxis because they, they have agreement with several taxi drivers, okay? So the same use case ported to run under the Internet of People means that you will have a peer-to-peer -peer taxi application and you, when you push the same button, that it looks exactly the same than the other, this application goes, instead of to going to Uber, goes to this network of Internet of People where all tax, where, where all these different profiles are. Let's imagine that there is like a layer with all taxi drivers, okay? 
So your application goes to the layer where all taxi drivers are, it queries the network and find 100 taxi drivers around you, and then automatically start requesting a quotation for each of these taxi drivers, and their mobile application is going to answer automatically also the quotation, and your application is going to get a list that then you can order it, uh, for example, by lowest, lowest price, okay? And then your application will try to get a deal with the first one in the list, okay? But think about this. These taxi drivers, they don't have any deal with any company, okay? This is free market. So you're creating a marketplace on the spot around you over a public infrastructure that is free, almost free to use, okay? How can you, how can you compete with that, okay? Even disruptive companies as Uber might not be as efficient like that, okay? So this type of use case, you can, you can think about uh, the most common sharing economy application just by, by porting them to this peer-to-peer -peer model, you have an advantage of this intermediation and by, and by this intermediation, you have an economic incentive for individuals to move from the web to this peer-to-peer -peer space, okay? So uh, this is something that regular people can, can understand. And once you start saving money in a consistent basis, you will probably switch. That's our idea. And the money saving there, is that just because you take less of a cut than like someone like Uber will be able to in the end? Or The money saving is because of this intermediation. It's a consequence of this intermediation. Uh, uh, right now, everybody is so used to being part of private networks that it's difficult to, to even imagine that private networks can be replaced, okay? Uh, what we are doing is so disruptive if, if it really can go global, okay? Mm -hmm. That, uh, think about it, companies are even evaluated by the size of the network, okay? So it's, it's like a 10 degree earthquake that changes the landscape, okay? Because uh, mm -hmm. as, as the network is open and it's an open protocol, that means that it allows interoperability and network effects. For example, let's say I build a chat application similar to WhatsApp but it runs over this Internet of People network, okay? It, it doesn't run on, on, on the network, it runs at the edge of the network, okay? So uh, it, this allows a lot of innovation because the network is a dumb network, okay? So I write a, a WhatsApp-like peer-to-peer application. Then I can chat with whoever uses this application because we are all, our old chat profiles are on the same network, okay? So when I promote my application, I add, I don't know, let's say a million users to this network. And then you build another chat application, but in, in your case, it looks like Facebook chat, okay? Then you promote this and you add 2 million users to the layer where are chat users in the network, okay? People who wants to chat, okay? So this, this means that the user base is shared, okay? It's the same that happened with Bitcoins. Uh, if I am Bitcoin wallet provider and I add a million users, to, they are, I, I am adding a million Bitcoiners to the ecosystem, okay? Another wallet provider adds another million, and that's why Bitcoin has this network effect, okay? So, uh, but, uh, and the good thing is that we have the same properties that the Bitcoin network, because if I send you Bitcoin with blockchain info wallet, you can receive it with another wallet that is not the same brand, yes or no? Yes. That means that in this yeah. case, I can chat with an application that looks very similar to WhatsApp, and probably you are answering me, in an application that looks very similar to Facebook chat, okay? So there is interoperability because it's an open protocol, okay? So this is these are the con core concepts around yeah, the yeah. How do you okay. like it? Okay, so can you tell me a little bit more technically then, what's the, what kind of protocol is it? How does it work? What's what's an identity key or whatever? Can you tell, how would I write an app for it? Okay, uh, the internet of people, so far is is formed by four different peer-to-peer -peer networks okay at the, at the at very very down the stack there is a blockchain that is what uh, what runs a token system that allowed incentivizing the different actors that that go around using these these applications okay on top of that there is another peer-to-peer -peer network that is what we call home nodes okay there is a concept of a home node 
that is a peer-to-peer -peer network that is geolocalized, okay, or, or geography aware, or something like that in English. Okay, that means that when you are when you are an end user, your application, okay, chooses one home node that is kind of close by to you. Okay, so that is where you check in and check out every time you go online. Okay, because your mobile phone is is volatile it gets online it gets offline it gets turned off or whatever okay every time you get online you you check in in your home node and once you check in other people can find you me being here in budapest i can find i can i can put a query in the network by your name and family name and uh, and your location liverpool and i will uh, and, and the network will resolve that and send me a list of people with your same name okay and i will choose and then i will Try to connect with you, okay? Uh, like the, the typical connection, send a connection request. If you accept it, then my, uh, my applications, okay? Let's say it's a, it's a type of chat connection. My chat application, any of them, can use that connection to communicate with you. And technically, what, what is happening is that when I write hello in my, my chat application, this is going through your home node that tells you you have like an application to application call, okay? And that's how my hello gets to your phone. And when you answer, it comes back because the home node is acting as a as a relay bridge between the two phones. Okay, so that's the second okay. that's the second layer of the second peer to peer network. The third layer is an is a layer of nodes that we call nearby nodes. Okay, that is used to solve the situation where you need to find people around you, like like the use case I was describing of Uber. If I want to request a taxi, I need all taxi drivers are around me, but I cannot be scanning the whole globe of, of where are the home nodes of the, the taxi drivers. So there is a specialized layer of nodes that is a peer-to-peer -peer network by itself, uh, where uh, certain type of profiles check in in order to be found by, by proximity. Okay, so that means that taxi drivers will be always checking in to their closest nearby node. Okay. So when I need all the taxi drivers around me, I just need to go to one node and ask for a list of the taxi drivers that are close to me. And that is how it's going to be resolved very easy. Okay, that's the third layer. And the fourth yeah. layer is a is a peer-to-peer -peer network to handle reputation and ratings of people. Okay, in this case, people uh, uh, can rate other people once they have established certain type of relationships. And this network is going to store reputation information, okay? Uh, and the, the good thing here is that uh, this reputation system is cross-application. That means that it's not only for, for you as an apartment owner that you are renting your apartment, and it's not only for taxi drivers to be rated, but for any type of profile. It's profile agnostic because around the, this network, a whole ecosystem is going to grow with different type of application that spans several industries. Mm. Okay, so uh, uh, the way that we design this is in a way that uh, profiles start building reputation, uh, and we also advocate towards a lot of privacy because all the information is stored always in your devices. The network only knows the minimum information of your profile in order for other people to find you. Okay, but but uh, in the in in the context of reputation, uh, you can have several identities, and from the outside, outside your device, nobody could link those identities that are mm. your your physical person. Okay, but at the same mm. time, this reputation system allows you to grow your reputation separately for different type of identities. Let's say a professional identity, a online dating identity, or whatever. But, it, oh, but at the same time, if you want, in some use cases, you want to prove reputation and you would like to combine them, okay? I can prove that I am the owner of these three identities to you by signing, okay? Uh, a certain message and you can go to the reputation system or this peer-to-peer -peer network and combine my reputation in order to prove that. It's, and that is quite cool okay. because it's, it's something that has been searched for for a while, you know? Yeah. In terms yeah, of reputation system. I, I found it really interesting that a couple of those layers had geography in them because it's something that's quite important where we are physically, but hasn't been, isn't often is missed from these solutions. Can you tell me just a little bit about what motivated you to include location? Geolocation has has a motivation 
that started uh, because of uh, privacy and also it, it has an impact in security, okay? For example, if we were here together, you sitting by my side and I send you a WhatsApp message that they are encrypted, uh, this message would go anyway through the United Kingdom to the US and come back to you that are one meter away to me, okay? But if we were in the same scenario using the internet of people, I would probably be communicating with you through your home node, okay? That if you live here, it, it would be in the same city, okay? So our communication, if it, is, if it is encrypted point to point, it doesn't even leave this city, okay? So good luck find that, okay? So uh, one of these motivation is this, and the other motivation also is related to decentralization, okay? We are trying to, to, to design a network that, 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 it, that could reach a, a high degree of decentralization, and and as as per this rule that uh, that your device is going to choose a home node that is nearby to you okay uh, you are somehow uh, avoiding that these home nodes or these network nodes get into silos of data centers or private companies that they can own them all you know uh, because they are your the devices are not simply uh, not going to choose that they are going to choose between a, a set of nodes that are close by to you and then they are going to apply like economic rules mm -hmm. because uh, there is an economy also around this that your device is paying like micro payments to home nodes to hold your profile and there is some incentivization scheme that allows every every entity to be incentivized by these internet of people tokens so it kind of forms a local economy as well you're saying uh... yes th there is a, a there is a micro economy running out uh, running here and that is what fermat comes in okay fermat itself is not the internet of people fermat is a framework for creating internet of people application in an easy way okay so it, it handles most of this protocol on the client side and at the same time it 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 has the it, it has a nice property that allows you if you want you can uh, use this framework like a library that saves you time okay but at the same time, it allows you that if you create your application in a certain way, like decomposing your application with reusable components, uh, then your application can become part of the framework, okay? And, and the framework, what, what provides is that when it's running at runtime in your phone, it's going to be automatically collecting these tokens and paying for you the home node services that you are consuming, but also it's going to be paying like pennies micro licenses monthly to component owners, okay? So uh, in the end, what we have is a framework that the more applications that are built and are becoming part of the framework, uh, the, the easiest is for the next developers to come and build application because they have more infrastructure already built in there. But, but at the same time, yeah. there is a, a micro economy running underneath the scheme that is incentivizing both node operators and developers creating these applications. So you've been in stealth mode for a couple of years. Can you tell me just a bit briefly what's the state of the software? Is it is it something I can write an application on already, or do you need contributions to the software itself next to the platform, or what's the? Well, the project the, the project has a couple of years, but w one whole year was spent designing all this, and because it, it, this is spans not it, this doesn't live only on, on, on the cryptocurrency war, but spans several industry and we believe we are more in the decentralization movement okay that is wider so it, it took us like a year to design all this and and then we we start developing a, a proof of concept we already created a proof of concept of the network like a, an early prototype and a proof of concept of the framework that allows to create application and also we had enough time to create several prototype applications for example, one Bitcoin wallet, for example, one chat application that looks very much like WhatsApp, for example, an application for what we call crypto brokers or the person in the neighborhood that uh, buys and sells cryptocurrency, okay? And we have in queue several others, but those are like in alpha stage. We are testing them mm -hmm. right now. And we have plans to, to, to deploy a, a beta probably in a couple of months uh, out of this. And 
Well, that's that's where we are now. We were in stealth mode like for a year and a half until December last year that we talk about this in the Latin American Bitcoin conference in Mexico. Um, um, from there, uh, well, we reached uh, the mainstream media and a lot of people were interested in joining. And well, so far it's going, it's going very well. So if, even if I'm not a programmer, can I join and use it already? Or is it a bit too early for that? What's the... uh, you can, if you're not a programmer, then you are, you, you can also help because this, this type of project spans more, more than programmers themselves. You need a lot of type of, of, of fields to, to complete this, this project, but uh, it's, it's not ready for end users because even if it is in alpha or it will come to reach beta, beta stage, uh, it's still not uh, as some of these applications is handling value like Bitcoin wallets and the payments with this crypto broker. Uh, we don't not recommend yet to, to be used with real money or at least with uh, more than a few dollars, you know, because it's, it's better. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, oh, just so, just quickly in terms of funding, how are you going to pay for development of the core platform on an ongoing basis? So, is there some, is there like a revenue model that, as it gets used more, that will pay for the improvements to the protocol? Well, yes, um, we started very early our token system, and all all the people that were contributing the, during the last two years, they were we were spreading these tokens as bounties. And at the same time, there were some, some very early investors that bought into this token system. So uh, there is enough money to, to continue development. And right now we are in the process of uh, uh, moving from what, is, what it was until today, uh, an op just an open source project with no real relationship with any legal entity to, to, to fully incorporate all the different entities uh, that are coming out of this, uh, all these activities that, that we are doing. For example, uh, this Internet of People concept is going to be handled by a, a consortium company that is going to be defining the standards. All the work that we have done so far, we are going to put it in this consortium and then we are going to uh, leave it there in order for universities and and companies to come in and join and and continue the definition of the standards of this internet of people uh, stuff so that that's for example one of the examples and well the different applications that have been built also are going to be uh, spread into different companies that are going to try to market them and and continue moving forward and well and yeah. these companies are going to go for fundraising and things like that this is what is going to happen in the next half of the year fantastic uh yeah look forward to it so just finally uh what's the way you would like people to help most of all um, well the, there is a lot of opportunity here uh, what i would like people is to come and, and do business with this because uh, I compare this, uh, this concept of Internet of People, this public infrastructure, uh, to a space similar to the web, okay? And probably I'm not exaggerating. And, and let, me, let me tell you why. Because every single use case you have on the web, you can port it here and has, uh, and has different properties, okay? The space has different properties. The space, the, this space is about this intermediation. And this intermediation means uh, on, on business application means cheaper transaction and on social application means more privacy and security okay so it makes sense to port any of the business model running right now on the web and put it here and you will uh, you should see a flow of people coming from the web to start using this type of model okay because it's either more private or it's either cheaper okay so the the mm. level of opportunity to build things here it's huge, it's huge. And at the beginning, in this very, very early stage, you don't need to be a genius to know what to do. Just pick up the, 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 the biggest sharing economy application that Uber, for example, that I was explaining to you, do it in this way, okay? And, and, and chances are that you 
can disrupt Uber, okay, in the long term, okay, because of this efficiency, mm. okay. So uh, you just have to go and do it. Once the, once the network is at, at the production production quality level, okay, uh, then you are going to be able to build this application either using Fermat or doing it from scratch. It doesn't matter, okay. You just go and do it, and, and probably the, the 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 first ten or top ten sharing economy uh, business model out there are the first candidates to rush and go and just do it, you know? So my advice is, is, is not come and help, come and do money, because here is a lot of opportunity. Fantastic. Uh, you get lo lots of entrepreneurs, it's, it's quite exciting. Yeah. Thank you for talking to us. Um, okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you for interviewing me and hope to see you soon again. <laughs>